Who's hosting this show? Hi, this is Amy Lewis. Or makeup. This is Engineers Unplugged. Hi, this is Amy Lewis, and we're back for an incredible episode of Engineers Unplugged. I should call it the nice hair edition. But instead, we've got Joe, and we've got Nick, and we're going to be talking about uh, role and policy-based control. So, Nick, take it away. All right. Thank you, Amy. Joe, how you doing? Doing well. Yourself? Very well, very well. First time at Partner Exchange, actually. So interesting to see the different dynamic of VMworld. But what I wanted to chat about today was uh, role-based access control and specifically around policy-based management. And where this, uh, where this comes into play is um, we have the storage admins and the users that access these sorts of resources, but they don't really like each other. They don't really like to give each other control of each other's resources. They don't want to play each other, in each other's sandbox yet. So what we're doing at NetApp is giving the ability to come in from both angles using things like role-based access control, policy-based management, and giving end users the ability to do their own jobs and the things that they want to do more and more. And at the same time, it allows the storage admins to retain that control that they're so, so powerful of or so uh, proud of and to enable them to continue to control and develop the environment as they see fit. Makes sense. It ties in very closely to um, what we're looking at from a network perspective. So, uh, with application-centric infrastructure from Cisco as a specific example, we look at this as the infrastructure space, the space where the administrators live and configure and need to maintain, and the user space. And deciding who gets what and where those controls sit is a very important play, uh, piece of rapidly evolving the data center to meet the new business demands. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. What I've drawn up here on, this, on the screen is, uh, it's the integrations we have here. If you take a typical vCenter, one of the new things we're introducing is the VASA provider, the vStorage APIs for storage awareness. And this is really the big deal because, um, let's see if I can do this two hands here. If we take a typical storage array, and you have a user trying to provision something into vCenter, the uh, vCenter has no idea what kind of disks are down here, what kind of aggregates, how it's laid out, what type of attributes that it has to it. That's what VASA does. VASA pushes uh, that information up into that so there's awareness. Around that we can build containers, policies of all kinds of stuff that contain those attributes and to turn into your gold, silver, bronze type of service levels that the user can come in and say, I need some storage. I want it to be gold. I want it to be replicated. I want all that stuff configured for me and then it can just move it out. They don't know anything about what's going on on the back end. We take care of all that and automate it and I assume a lot works uh, with the networking stuff the same way. Yeah, we'd be looking at it the same way, and I like the way you kind of define policy. Policy's not just going to be my RBAC. It's not just going to be how do my users access the system, who gets to access it. It's also the policy to deploy the infrastructure itself. So in your case, it's storage pools, it's redundancy features, it's that type of thing. In my case, it's things like quality of service, SLAs, um, link redundancy, and that type of thing. So we take the idea of policy and use it to drive the infrastructure as a whole up to the user. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's one of the biggest things that's going to happen this year in mass, uh, aside from the hybrid cloud and those sorts of scenarios. But I think these are the sorts of things that feed those hybrid cloud scenarios and make things like uh, the average Joe user, no, not to knock you or anything, but the average Joe user to come in and go, I need some storage and I don't care about any of the rest of it. That's one of my favorite defini definitions I've ever heard of cloud is I don't care. I just want it to be there. And when I, what I want, when I want it, and however long I want it for I agree with that completely, and I'm definitely not your average Joe user. I'm, I'm a lot worse than that. But um, it's, it's what we look at, what is actually business relevant when you're driving this? Because the way in which storage is pooled, the way in which the network is pooled, it, latency jitter and blah, blah, blah on the network are irrelevant to a business. It's how's my application running? How are the users or developers working on that application accessing it? And that's what policy allows us to do. It allows us to abstract up the complexity underneath in a fashion that makes sense to the business and application owners. Yeah, that's, the, that's a big key word, abstraction. Uh, when we started with server virtualization, the first thing that we abstracted was the servers. We've gone to and done the networking now, we've done, we're working on doing the storage now, we've done so with Clustered ONTAP and several of the other vendors have done so as well. So I think abstraction, the next level of abstraction is the entire data center. We're going to get to the point where the entire data centers are floating up in the clouds, you know, for lack of a better phrase, but they're going to be able to move around seamlessly. I think things like ACI are actually going to help do that. Uh, and that's why I'm very excited about that. I think things like uh, RBAC and policy-based management, any user coming in at any time with a credit card can get whatever they need, however they, long they need it for. And things like this definitely enable the cloud. I'd agree completely. And if you're going to use floating up in the clouds as your slogan, you might need to get uh, Snoop Dogg as your next marketing rep. Word.
<laughs> how, do, how do I even answer that? <laughs> so I have a question. That's how I answer this. So if this is, you all make it sound so easy. What are the challenges? Why isn't everyone doing this? Uh, belief that it can be a real thing yet. Um, and I would say that the, the hyperscalers are getting there, but they're not there yet as far as links between the two. So we're doing some solutions like you've heard of our uh, NetApp private storage, the Direct Connect solutions, where we're using partner colo data centers that are right next to the hyperscaler data centers, and then simply doing cross connects. So we've got a solution for Amazon, and we've got one for uh, VMware's vCloud hybrid service as well, and we're probably going to continue to expand that out. So do you agree with that answer? Is it belief? Uh, you know, what, what's keeping people back? Not everyone can have a Nick or a Joe working for them. There you go, the average show. So uh, since I, the power here is to believe, I think we need to see from these two, the hair edition, the unicorn with the beautiful hair. So that's your challenge. Go, unicorn with great hair. I know that Nick is participating with St. Baldrick's, and uh, so I think this is a good on-point time for him to, to show us his, his unicorn name. All right, Joe, let's see that unicorn in progress. I think they've been practicing. Joe, can you talk to me about that hairdo? This is uh, the, the lion mane of unicorn. This is, this is taking it a step further. I'm over here trying. <laughs> the lion of corn is not getting a lot of approval from the crown. I'm trying. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to have to give this one to Nick. <laughs> that, I can see that. That unicorn's got flow. <laughs> So thanks for a great uh, policy-based discussion. And uh, we'll see you next time on Engineers Unplugged.